Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing test activities and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 5.1 test planning. And as a part of today's tutorial, we'll be covering the last two topics of this segment that is test pyramid and test quadrants. Well, when it comes to talking about the pyramid and the quadrant, basically these are the topics taken right from the Agile methodology. Uh, certainly in traditional models, we don't talk about the pyramids, of course, but uh, when it comes to the Agile methodology, we do talk about how exactly testing gets pra uh, practiced as a part of the process. And uh, certainly the amount of testing being conducted and the amount of automation being performed is a key factor to drive the entire Agile process. And that's where the pyramid is one of the concepts to talk about how much effort do we really put in which level of testing and each segment of this pyramid conducts what type of test and how much automation is really recommended to be conducted in order to drive this process altogether. And that's where these two topics play a really vital role in understanding the amount of testing, the levels and the effort on automation when it comes to the Agile methodology. So right here, we'll be taking you directly to the understanding of what is test pyramid first, and then we'll be talking about the testing quadrants, which is a part of the pyramid itself. So the very first thing here to talk from the syllabus is the test pyramid is basically a model showing that the different test may have different granularity. And the granularity word here certainly means the amount of effort being put, like which level certainly goes in deep and which levels are done at very high level. So when it comes to talking about that, the test pyramid model supports the team in test automation and in test effort, which are the two major factors, allocations by showing that different goals are supported by different levels of test automation. And right here on your screen on the right hand side, if you see, we do have the pyramid uh, picturized, which talks about when you talk about Agile, there's a lot of unit tests being conducted, then a smaller amount of automated acceptance test, and then a bit of automated UI test. However, if I talk about the levels of testing right here, the levels of testing is also going uh, more at the bottom and then the higher levels are conducted at smaller point with smaller effort. For example, if I talk about integration, they will be comparatively less than unit. If I talk about system, they will be further com com comparatively less than the integration and so on. Same way, if I talk about automation, unit testing is completely automated. The second integrations are also looked forward to have more automation. And similarly, coming to the end, a little and very minimal exploratory tests which are done manually altogether. However, if I look at the picture again, on the left hand side, we have an example of inverted pyramid, which comes into the traditional model. There we do a very minimal uh, unit test. And then at the same time, we look forward to have a more and more manual test through UI, which is conducted at later point of time, that is system testing or acceptance testing or integrations. But compared to unit, there are more. So that's where the understanding gets created that the amount of effort being put in Agile initially is more compared to be later because we look forward to prevent defects rather than finding defects. And when it comes to traditional, we are more curious about finding defects than performing activities which are really going to prevent the defects, right? So that particularly makes the objective of this particular topic very clear that why should we talk about the test pyramid? Also to add here, uh, the pyramid layers generally represents group of tests. The higher the layer, the lower the test granularity, test isolation, and test execution time. Test in the bottom layer are small, isolated, fast, and check a small piece of functionality. So usually a lot of them are needed to achieve a reasonable coverage. The top layer represents complex, high-end, end-to-end tests. So in simple words, the same thing, what I just put it in very nutshell way is being elaborated in the pointers as well. That means the lower part of the pyramid will certainly contain more granular tests and at the same time, making sure that more amount of testing being conducted so that we can identify the defects early. Do not forget, we covered some of the concepts of this in chapter two, that early and frequent feedback certainly saves a lot of your time and detection of defects much earlier. Indeed, in turn, can also prevent defects from being propagated into the next levels. Further to add here, of course, these high level tests are generally slower than the test from the lower layers. 
and they typically check a large piece of functionality so usually just a few of them are needed to achieve a reasonable coverage and then the number of number and naming of the layers may differ for example the original test pyramid model defined had only three layers that is unit test service test and ui test another very popular model is called as unit test integration which is component integration test and end-to-end -end test other test levels can also be used further to define into within the same pyramid so it's up to the organization how they really define their different levels and they can determine the number of layers they have within the pyramid so it's very important for the organizations to call out that where exactly they'll be putting what amount of effort and that's how they put the size of the pyramid into multiple number of layers so further to continue we'll be talking about what is the quadrants so generally we consider four standard quadrants into the pyramid and just have a look on that as well well, when it comes to the testing quadrants, these are basically the elaboration of the partitions within the pyramid and dedicatedly we look forward to have at least four quadrants which are very standardized in terms of organizing, conducting and defining what levels and amount of effort to be put into different levels of testing. And that's where the quadrants play a vital role. Again, we do have a very standard set of uh, quadrants defined here. However, if your organization or your team has defined something better, it's completely over to the organization policies. So it's not something really particularly important that, okay, we should stick to this number of quadrant and this is how we should conduct it. This is the definition of the model that is pyramid. But if you wish, you can certainly define something of your own and determine what to be conducted in which quadrant. In simple words, when it comes to the testing quadrants, it is basically defined by Brian Marek group the test levels with the appropriate test types, activities, test techniques, and work products in the Agile development model. The model supports test management in visualizing these to ensure that all appropriate test types and test levels are included in the SDLC and in understanding that some test types are more relevant to certain test levels than others. So it's just like showcasing the significance and importance of what exactly need to be conducted. And that takes care of all that, what we really want to do. Also to add here, of course, uh, the model also provides a way to differentiate and describe the types of test to all the stakeholders, including developers, testers, business representatives. In this model, tests can be business facing or technology facing. Tests can also support the team that is guide the development or critique the product. So more important to understand here is that we are talking about things which are related to different levels, but the also contributing from the point that which is technology driven or what is going to justify and validate the technical aspects and what levels or what quadrants talks about fulfilling the requirements. So critique the, critique the product is more about meeting the requirements and technology facing certainly means about meeting the standard technical aspects of it. So let's quickly talk about the different quadrants. The very first quadrant here is quadrant one, and this is uh, considered as technology facing, which certainly supports the team. Here, this quadrant contains component and component integration tests. These tests should be automated and included in the CI process, which in simple terms means this is completely technology driven. We are talking about the unit tests, and this must be completely automated as much as possible. When it talks about the quadrant two, the quadrant two is business facing. That means talking about meeting the customer expectations, but also supports the team. The third important thing, this quadrant contains functional test examples, user story test, user experience prototypes, API testing and simulations. These tests check the acceptance criteria and can be manual or automated. Let me just keep it very straightforward team. You may have to remember every single quadrant with their specification. That is whether it is technology facing, what kind of support does it provide, what kind of tests being conducted and whether it is manual and automated. OK, so four items to be remembered from every single quadrant. Talking about quadrant three, quadrant three is for business facing, which critics the product. The quadrant contains exploratory test, usability testing, user acceptance testing. And these tests are user oriented and often manual. So you can see the difference, right? The first quadrant was completely automated. Second quadrant can be manual or automated. The third one, given that it is user oriented, will generally be manual or, you know, manual in nature altogether. 
However, when it comes to quadrant four, all the non-functional tests can be conducted. So when it comes to quadrant four, it is again technology facing, but critics the product. This quadrant contains smoke tests and non-functional tests, except usability, because usability is conducted already in Q3. So except usability, you can do all other non-functionals what's in your scope. And also uh, these tests are often automated because we know that most of the non-functional testing is not something which we can afford to do manually. Rather, we look forward to do it using automation testing tools. So put together, these are all the insights what you really wanted to have from the con concept of the pyramid and the quadrant, which put together makes all the understanding what you really need in order to drive the required effort and the way it should be conducted when it comes to agile methodology. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.